Hi friends, welcome back to the Moss and Mirth channel. If you're new here, my name is Stephanie and this is where I share my passion for nature, creativity, and self-love. Today I'm bringing you a macrame tutorial where we're going to make a macrame chandelier, ceiling, hanging, pendant, I'm not sure what to call it. Um, a light kit is not included, but if you would like to see a light kit added to this um, project, then leave a comment below and leave a like on this video, and I will do a follow-up. Here is what we're going to be making today. It turned out absolutely beautiful. I was actually inspired by a photo I saw um, on Pinterest of an anthropology chandelier that was just beautiful. So I tried to recreate it as best I could. This is a really time consuming project. Um, a lot of us are stuck at home right now because of the pandemic, if you're watching this when it goes live. So this is a great way to um, kind of dig in and, and get creative. Um, it does take a while though. I think it took me about three to four days and in total, maybe about 10 hours. So definitely not for the faint of heart. I'm sorry to have been MIA for so long. Um, some of you may know that I opened an Etsy shop last year. And for the last few months, I've been focusing on really building up my inventory and getting that off the ground. I'm happy to report that things are going awesome. I'm having so much fun with that. So, and if you haven't checked out the Etsy shop yet, I will link it down below. So just follow that link to go check out what all macrame goodies are in the shop. Be sure to stay tuned to the end of this video because I'm going to give you some additional tips and information on how you can best complete this project should you take on the endeavor. So without further ado, let's get crafting. All materials for this project will be linked in the description box below. Get started by cutting 96 pieces of rope, each about 6 feet long. Once all your pieces are cut, attach each piece to your hoop using a lark's head knot. You can choose to have your knots face outward or inward depending on your preference. Now on to the pattern for our chandelier. Start by sectioning off eight pieces of rope from the hoop, or 16 strands total, and create a V shape using a double half hitch knot. Taking the farthest left hand strand, which we'll call your lead rope, run it at a diagonal and begin tying your half hitch knots. Remember to keep your lead rope in the direction that it needs to go to help your knots line up appropriately. You'll use the eight left side strands to create the left side of your V, and alternatively, you'll use the right eight strands to create the right side of your V. Simply take the strand next to your lead rope and cross it over your lead rope and then under and pull it through the loop that is created. Half hitch knots are very easy, they're just a little time consuming. Now that you have both sides of your V created, we'll continue on to make the double half hitch by running a second row of half hitch knots. The anthropology piece that inspired me to recreate this actually had three rows of half hitch knots, but to save time, I decided just to do two. Um, but if you're really adventurous, you could go for three. Okay, now that you have both sides of your V created using the double half hitch knots, you're gonna take your four inner strands and create a square knot. 
Square knots are one of the most common macrame knots, but just in case you don't know how to do one, you'll simply take your two inner strands and lay them flat straight down the middle. And then taking, it really doesn't matter which side, but taking one side, um, or taking one of your strands on the outside, you'll cross it over both middle strands. And then taking the other strand that you haven't used yet, you're gonna run it over the strand that you've already crossed over your two middle strands. And then you'll take it under and then through the loop on the opposite side. Should be easy to understand just by watching the video. All right, now we're gonna run two more rows of double half hitch knots, finishing off the V into more of an X shape. That was simple enough, right? We're gonna keep going, taking um, 16 strands at a time and doing the exact same thing. So once you've finished and you've gone all the way around your hoop, you should have 12 total X's. Now that all of your X's are done, you're gonna wanna tie square knots at the base of each X that's gonna link each X together. That way they all lay together when the um, chandelier is hung. next part's going to be a little bit difficult to explain so just watch the video and you should get the hang of it but essentially what we're doing is creating a triangular shape with these X patterns taking one of your sections making sure that you have square knots on each side attaching them all together you're going to create another X, X pattern To the left of that X that you've just created, you're going to begin creating another X, but you're going to leave one leg of the X off. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Here I'm starting to the left of that X that I just created, and I'm going to leave off the bottom left leg of my X to kind of keep that triangular shape coming down. You'll see it as the piece comes together.
now you'll just do the same thing on the other side of that main X that we created at the beginning of this step. And remember to tie your square knots at the base of each X. Okay, at this stage, you should really see the triangle coming together. All we're gonna do now is at the center of that triangle we're, we've created where we have two X's, one on top of the other, we're just gonna create a V now, finishing off the triangle shape. And lastly, you'll finish that off with a square knot right in the center. That finishes off one of our triangle shapes. We just have two more to go. So shifting your piece around, you're gonna do that same thing on the next few sections of the cord. I'll spare you the voiceover at this part and just lead in with some music. Enjoy.
Okay, friends, the hardest part is over. Now moving on to our beads. Now I myself didn't have quite enough beads to do every single strand. Now you could absolutely do this and I think it would look just stunning. But what I did is just added a bead on every third strand and then finish that off with a knot. If the holes in your beads are a little snug for your rope, I recommend taking a little bit of scotch tape, wrapping that around the end of your rope and you'll find that you can much more easily slide that through your bead. Depending on how long you want your pendant to be, uh, this is the stage where you're gonna wanna determine that. I decided to go with a length of five extra inch inches beyond my pattern, um, but you could go longer or shorter depending on where you need it to fall. Once the bead is strung onto your rope, you'll measure the distance that you want, in my case, five inches, and then you'll just finish that off with a basic knot and keep that up until you've made it all the way around your piece. You could definitely stop here if you want and if you have enough beads to make it all the way around then you're pretty much done at this point except for trimming off the edges but since i didn't i decided to just take the strands that don't have beads on them and tie a knot just to give it a little bit more of a finished look so measuring about that five inches i'm just tying a knot on all the strands without beads If you've made it this far, then bravo to you. <laughs> at this stage, we're just gonna trim off the edges. So I'm taking sections at a time, trying to lay them out flat um, and evenly, and then I'm just trimming off the excess rope at the bottom. Now for our very last step, you'll want to gather up your chain and maybe a few jump rings if you have them and your pliers. This chain that I purchased came with a few jump rings, so I was in good shape. If you don't have jump rings, you could probably just cut and maneuver your um, the last link of your chain and use that as kind of a makeshift jump ring, but I do think that jump rings make it quite a bit easier. Using your pliers, you'll need to cut your chain into three equal lengths. In my case, my lengths were about 15 inches each. The chain I used conveniently had an existing cut in all of the lengths, so I was able to just pry one length and then remove it so that I had separate pieces. One piece of chain and your pliers and a jump ring if you have it. If not, you can simply pry apart that last length of chain and try to use that. But you'll simply um, gently pull apart your jump ring, attach it to the chain, and then attach it to your hoop. And then you'll 
just simply repeat that for your other two pieces of chain, making sure that you're evenly spacing them throughout the hoop. step is to gather up the three chains at the top where the top of your pendant is going to hang and use a jump ring or maybe even like an s hook something to bring all those pieces together i just used that last jump ring that i had in that little kit i bought and put them all together and that is it my friends we are all done thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed don't click away just yet because I'll have a few additional tips and trips coming here in just a second. Thanks again. This was my first time working with a thinner rope. Um, it was a little bit tricky, but I did find it to be very forgiving. It just is a little more time consuming <laughs> given that you have less rope to work with. If you notice small changes in the lighting and things like that throughout the video, just bear in mind that I filmed this over the course of several days. So you'll notice that the coffee cup levels change and things things like that. Um, I would recommend working this project the same way and just doing it in small doses because it's a lot more manageable and more enjoyable that way. You may also notice that I used far too much rope, which I tend to do when doing a project for the first time, um, just because it's better to have too much than too little. But if you follow the measurements that I provide throughout the video, you should be in great shape and have plenty of materials. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and if you decide to recreate this macrame piece, be sure to tag Moss and Mirth on any social media so our little community can check out your creation. Well, that's it for today's video video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!